hyperopia correction today is very limited. For low hyperopia we can employ hyperopic LASIK or hyperopic PRK. However, when we are talking about hyperopia corrections of three diopters and more, uh, we have not many alternatives. Currently, phakic IOLs is the only alternative. However, hyperopic eyes have a shallow anterior chamber and therefore, in many cases, there's not space enough to implant such an ICL or anterior chamber IOL. And that's why we were looking for alternatives that can be used for hyperopia corrections up to eight diopters, uh, starting at three uh, diopters. You know, on, on a sudden we can uh, guarantee large optical zones of up to seven millimeter, which stay that way, do not regress with time, um, and we can offer corrections up to eight diopters without jeopardizing any optical benefit. In addition, and this is very important, this is a reversible procedure. If you do a hyperopic laser for five diopters and it turns out that the patient doesn't like it, you're in trouble. In the, in the case of like, you just remove the denticule and then the patient is as hyperopic as he was before. Yeah, in essence, we, this is a two-step procedure. In the first step, we create a LASIK flap and implant a pre-prepared lenticule centered on the optical axis. And after a while, as soon as we get re reproducible corneal topography readings as well as refractions, we lift the flap again and do a refractive fine-tuning using the eczema laser on the lenticule. This is a lamellar keratoplast and we know that the tissue lasts as long as the eye lasts because latest after 12 years the collagen is replaced by body-owned collagen and therefore this is indefinitely. I don't know exactly how long the learning curve will be for this technique uh, and that's why we are employing prospective um, studies in multiple centers and as soon as we know uh, how difficult it will be uh, we can warn uh, newcomers. On the other hand, lamellar cataplasty is not something that is done only by very specialized surgeons but the normal corneal surgeon will be able to produce that. A patient who cannot come along with contact lenses and glasses for various reasons. Imagine that you have a prima ballerina which is plus eight and cannot use contact lenses anymore. Would you believe that this is a good situation, dancing the Swan Sea with glasses of plus eight diopters? Yes. However, in older patients, we do have an additional option because in those patients, we also can do a cataract extraction and correct and the majority of the hyperopia by using stronger intraocular lenses. On the other hand, uh, also for intraocular lenses we do have upper limits and therefore in some of the cases before we replace a lens which was too weak we rather would do fine-tuning using like. The recovery time is very comparable to any other recovery of a lamellar cataplasty, which means that uh, a full vision is achieved after approximately one month. The follow-up is very comparable to any cataplasty uh, follow-up. 
which means that we are seeing the early post-operative follow-up within the first week, at least once or twice. And then we will see the patient on a monthly basis until we, we have a stabilization uh, in refraction as well as in corneal topography, because it doesn't make sense to do the next step of the like procedure, the laser step of that procedure, before we have a stable result. Many of those patients are coming in and want to see 120% after the procedure. We, of course, cannot guarantee that, especially since many of those patients have an amblyopic eye and a very good seeing eye. And in the amblyopic eye, that will be always our first eye to be operated on. Uh, and in those patients, of course, you cannot tell them that uh, they will see 100%. In the dominant eye, however, um, 100% is not unusual. Yes, there are many side effects. There is a lot of glare during the first days of surgery and even months after surgery. There is still a lot of regression of the effect. Uh, also, patients may suffer from a dry eye, but those are all side effects that are related with the LASIK procedure that is included and nearly none of them is related to the implant of the lenticule. The perfect lenticule uh, for hyperopia correction um, would contain a Bowman's membrane because then the relift after four weeks or six weeks would be so much easier and so much more reproducible compared to the rough surface of a double cut lenticule. In addition, we would like to have lenticules with a diameter of at least seven millimeters and if possible even seven and a half or eight millimeters uh, in order to guarantee a good optical zone. Last but not least is the profile of that lenticule should not be spherical but wavefront optimized to correct for the spherical aberration that is induced during that procedure.